Hi, Christine. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first things first, what was it like to get a diagnosis of autism as an adult? Do you know what? Honestly, it's, it's been a huge relief. It, it's really helped me understand why I am the way I am, why I've struggled throughout my whole life. Um, you know, it, it kind of makes sense as to why I've got three autistic children. It's been a huge positive for me. When you say how you struggled, what was it like then growing up? Was it, was it a feeling as though you somehow didn't fit, was an outsider? What, what were you doing? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've never felt like I've fitted in anywhere and I've tried and I've tried to be like other people, which is, but I now understand that is masculine, which is part of being autistic. Um, right through school, I really struggled. I never really had many friends and I still don't have many friends now. And I try and I just, it's something I struggle with socially, you know, um, making conversations. I struggle with change. I struggle with food, sensory issues, clothes, labels, being in busy places. Um, it, it's everything. It, I ticked a lot of boxes, you know, quite a few red flags there. I'm surprised it wasn't picked up on a lot earlier. Well, I wonder one of the reasons perhaps why it wasn't picked on earlier, and this is something I see in, in my work with people with autism, is that girls, especially in women, can mask their symptoms. So, in, in other words, they're, they're camouflaging who they are in order to fit in. Yeah, absolutely, and I do it all the time. And masking isn't something that you can switch off, even though I know I'm doing it sometimes. It's not a choice. It's become a way of life. It's almost like survival method it's just something you do without even thinking um i've done it in work in different tv shows i've tried to just be like everyone else to try and fit in to try and be liked and it's it's hard to keep up you can't do it because it's not really the real you i am my most comfortable self when i'm on my own and i often think even my husband wouldn't recognize me if he saw me when i'm on my own and for somebody who likes their own company, having a diagnosis of autism is one thing, but it was put out there to the rest of the world. Everybody was with you almost when you got your diagnosis. What was that like? It's been amazing. Mostly I was worried about thinking, is this going to affect my work? And, and I thought, oh God, are people going to treat me differently? For me, just having the whole nation with me has been a huge positive. I've been inundated with messages from people mostly women but you know there are men too that have realized that they could be autistic and they're going to go and seek help now i think it's good to show that you know it's it's not this awful you know it's not an illness it's not a big negative thing you know of course it's it's difficult at times but you know there's lots of positives with it too if we all focus on people's qualities rather than the difficulties then I think the world would be a much better place. Absolutely. I mean, everybody, if, if, they, if they have autism, they have it very differently, and, and, of course, they can present very differently, but it must be so reassuring to see your family and all the joy and happiness that you have with three autistic children and being autistic yourself. You know, people struggle, you know, in, in all walks of life, regardless of what abilities and disabilities they've got. And with autism, you can read every single book on the planet. You can try and educate yourself as much as possible, and it will help. But ultimately, you've got to get to know the person. I've got three autistic children. I'm autistic myself. And we all are individual people. The thing with autism, as we know, it's a huge, big, massive spectrum. Mm -hmm. It affects everyone differently. You know, so what works for one of my children won't necessarily work for the other. So it's great to educate yourself, read up about it, understand it but you've got to get to know the actual person themselves because autism is not like a one size fits all. Can I ask, when you receive the diagnosis, has it subsequently changed the way you see yourself, your relationship with yourself and also your relationship with other people? How has that shifted? It's really helped. So not long after I got my diagnosis, I started filming um, a TV show about cancer and it was the first time I had to spend time with people that I didn't know. And we were expected to, you know, interact all day, make conversation, um, eat together, all of these things that I really struggled with, but I wanted to do it. And understanding that I was struggling because I'm autistic, mm -hmm. I was able to just speak to them and say, listen, every now and again, I'm just going to have a little bit of time out. And I'd, during lunchtime, I would just go and eat on my own and 
it was just my way of being able to calm down, switch off, just have a little bit of quiet time, and then I could go back and carry on filming. If I hadn't have had my diagnosis before that, I would have been panicking, thinking I'm going to isolate myself, I'm going to look really unsocial, I'm going to have to sit and eat with everyone. And, you know, it's it's been a really big positive being able to say, it's going to help me if I can just do this. And, you know, like you would with anyone with any kind of disability, if somebody was in a wheelchair, you would be them around. So I think if you're autistic and you're in a job and there's something you're struggling with, we should be able to say quite openly, I need a little bit of time out now and again, it's going to help me to be able to carry on with the rest of the day. So it, it's been really, really helpful. As you say, so autism is a huge spectrum and, and, and people live with it very differently. But what would your advice be to someone who's watching, who's living with autism or living with somebody with autism? How can how can they help or help themselves? Patience is something that I learned once I had my children. Um, you, you've got to be patient. I think, you know, a lot of autistic people do move at a different speed. And for me, I like to do things in my own time. I, I do need a lot of time. Um, just try and understand and care and include them. You know, inclusion is, is something that we're crying out for to be accepted and you know for my children especially they're all young they're at school and I say to the other parents you know please still invite them to birthday parties they might not come that you know the wherever you do the birthday party for a child might be too busy it might be too loud it can trigger meltdown so we might not come but please still include them mm -hmm. you know um and I think that needs to carry on right right through to Adelaide. I think you're so right is it it's be I think you're so right, it's about being transparent with people, isn't it? And saying, listen, this is helpful, this is not so helpful. And if, if I'm going to do this, then can we make sure that? And just putting a structure in place so that you're comfortable with what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen and you know how to get out if it's starting to feel uncomfortable. Well, yeah, when I was at school, obviously, autism wasn't really spoken about much back then. I don't think I'd even heard of it. But I missed every single mealtime, so I didn't eat when I was at school for years and years, and I, I actually had an disorder. Um, I didn't understand then what was going on, but all my reasons for not eating at school was, was autistic symptoms. I didn't like the busy canteen. I didn't like the food that was there. And I had the whole anxiety of where to sit because I didn't have friends, I didn't know who to go with. All of these things built up, which ended up with me having an eating disorder. When my children started school, because of that experience, I was able to sit with their headmaster and say, then they're not going to eat in the canteen, they're not going to eat with everybody else. Please, can you reassure me that my children are able to eat somewhere quietly on their own? I will bring food in if they won't eat the food that's here. And thank God we're in a really, really understanding school. And they were like, that's absolutely fine. You know, we want the children to eat. And just knowing that because of my experience, has made sure that my children now eat every day at school. And now it's took a couple of years, but now they will sit with other children and they will eat together. It's not too busy and it's not too loud. They can do it. I think that was some help and support that I really lacked and missed. And it, it could have been avoided, you know, if it was understood back then. So just knowing how you can help yourself, how you can help your children, I think it's really important and to be able to say it out loud. Christine McGuinness, thanks so much for being with us and thanks for raising awareness as well of autism. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.